Hey, we're finally back with the CB750. Welcome to Hack a Week. Lots of changes here in the garage. We've got things a lot more organized than they used to be. If you recall, uh, about a month or so ago, I brought home my toolbox over that away and built this workbench a couple of months ago. Finally got everything all organized, parts uh, put up on shelves above me here, tools hanging on the walls. Got the engine jigged up here in a crazy way. It's upside down because I have this wild ass idea of how to put the pistons into the cylinders a little bit different way than normal. We'll get started on that in a minute, but let's go on a tour of the garage. Okay, let's take a tour of the garage here. We got the workbench pretty well worked out here. Uh, got the engine jigged up on the stand in a little bit different way. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the top part of the case is sitting here underneath an old t-shirt. But uh, yeah, got things pretty well done. Uh, tools hanging up on the walls there. Got all of the CB parts up above on shelves. Whole bunch of shelves that I put up. Heavy duty stuff there. So everything is up off the ground and down below uh, there's the big crate with some other CB parts in it and some other goodies down below here. This is where I keep all my power tools now down underneath the workbench. Found this cool old uh, Kenwood stereo for sale for pretty cheap. I think I got it for 45 bucks. And I got the laptop out here with Pandora on it. So I got some tunes to listen to. And if I need to access the internet for any info, there it is. Drill press there. Over here, we've got the roll around tool cart. So I can take that uh, anywhere in the shop that I want to. I turned my other red cart into something to hold my uh, bandsaw and uh, sander. CB is sitting underneath a blanket here. There's Lisa's bike, the 250 Virago. And over here is the giant toolbox with all the goodies in it. A couple of people said, uh, why don't you take us on a tour of the toolbox? Well, let's give you a quickie look. Miscellaneous screwdrivers and stuff in there. Uh, all kinds of punches and things. This is the player's drawer. Just tons and tons of different kinds of players. That's the electrical drawer. Um, got some voltmeters in there, things like that. The hammer drawer. Put the hammer down. Uh, let's see, in here I've got uh, the drill drawer. And then this is kind of the miscellaneous other electrical drawer and um, things like JB Weld, some solder, uh, some Honda Bond. I'll be using that soon. Got a grinder down in there. Then we got the big drawers. The one on top is just for junk. Uh, just like most mechanics, I always have a junk drawer. There's uh, wrenches, more wrenches. These are some of the uh, gear wrench wrenches. These are all line wrenches. Stubby wrenches, these are real handy, little short ones come in handy uh, a lot of times. These are crow foot wrenches here. Use these when you need to get out a nut in a tight place. Don't use those a whole lot. Impact stuff in there, air tools, sockets, taps, more uh, stuff there, a bunch of torques, a whole torque set. Got the security ones and the regular ones. This is interesting, this is a two I think a two and three eight socket I had to build one day. Yep, I actually built that myself. How about that? Couldn't find one at the uh, local tool place. So I built it. A few more things in here. Uh, let's see, that's a caliper wind back tool for automotive work. A couple other specialty wrenches for doing uh, timing belts and serpentine belts, impact uh, wrench there, hand operated style. Test equipment down here, fuel uh, pressure testers, got one of the infrared thermometers, good old vacuum gauge, hydrometer for a battery and uh, a tester for um, antifreeze. Got my homemade fuel injector tester in there. What's this? Uh, that's another uh, fuel pressure gauge setup. There is a tester for uh, pressurizing cooling systems. Uh, got a little butane soldering iron inside there. That is handy. That is an oscilloscope. That's a super handy device. Pick that up for a real reasonable price too. And down here we've got uh, more specialty stuff, Mercedes tools. There's a chain tool kit for uh, motorcycles. These are oil filter wrenches and stuff. These are for doing interior and door panel work, things like that. Uh, torque wrenches. 
And in the bottom drawer, let's see, AC gauges, timing light, other miscellaneous stuff, gloves, an old Polaroid camera. <laughs> Weird story behind that. Oh, my toys. I forgot to get my toys out. My toys are still down in here. And my Volkswagen bus. And uh, my 2002 BMW. Over here on the side box, this is miscellaneous stuff, measuring devices, and pens and pencils. Uh, brushes, things like that, scissors, um, clutch alignment tools, got fuel line removal tools in here, striker, specialty tools, uh, bearing uh, seal, puller, brake tools, uh, gloves, and a lots of flaring tool in there, clamps and pullers in there. Let's see, this is uh, would be like the sanding and uh, bodywork drawer. And then this one's kind of some of the safety gear like gloves and goggles and things like that. What's this? Oh, that's my Dremel down in there too. So there you go. That's uh, all the goodies in that great big giant toolbox. Really good to have all that stuff here at home and have the garage set up nice. Oh, and by the way, over here, this is where the cats sleep in the winter time. That's their little bed. That's right. Well, enough of that crap. Let's get to that CB750, shall we? I'm pretty anxious to get back to work on it, and I know you are really itching to see some more stuff. So here we go. We're going to put piston rings on the pistons and get the pistons installed in the cylinders and then put the cylinder onto the crankcase. We're going to do it all upside down. And you might be saying, well, why? Well, I'll explain that next. Almost forgot my favorite new friend in the shop, the kerosene heater. This is a 28,000 BTU heater I picked up at a yard sale and it is working great to heat this shop up. Hey Figaro, Figaro likes it in here now. It's a little bit warmer. What's the temperature in here? Uh, not bad, I've got it up to about 58 degrees um, and that's pretty good considering it's about 20 degrees outside right now. Yeah, North Carolina gets a little bit cold but nothing like you guys up in the north. Let's get to work. Okay, before I do anything, these studs were replaced by the previous owner. Um, they weren't Loctited into place, and I want them Loctited. So I'm going to spin them all out, and then I'll take some uh, brake and parts cleaner, spray on stuff, clean off the threads here, clean off the threads inside the case, and then we're going to put just a little bit of the red high-strength Loctite on there and spin them all back in. So all of that's got to be done before I do anything. All right, let's spray a little parts cleaner on there. We'll just let that dry off. And then I'm going to get just a little bit up into the threads and let that dry off. And just a little bit of Loctite on here. Don't need much, tiny bit. That's about it, just a little drop like that. And we'll spin that back in. Now repeat the procedure for every one of these studs. I'm going to give that just a little extra turn with some vice grips. Just a little bit. Just to make sure it's snug. That's it. Now we'll move on to the rest. So the whole reasoning behind the way I'm doing this here is hopefully to make it a little bit easier to put the piston cylinder assembly together. Because normally you do it well, I say normally, that's with the engine completely assembled. If you wanted to just do the top end only and you're leaving the rods poking out, you need to put the pistons into the cylinders, but you know, you've got them sitting there like this poking up out of the engine, right? You put the uh, rings on, you have to compress the rings with a ring compressor and then slide the cylinder down onto that. Well, to do that, a lot of people make a little block of wood that stands this off and keeps the piston nice and level and then you have to go through and do one at a time or do all four at once, slide them down onto there. And it's quite a bit of choreography, I guess you would call it, and coordination to get them all to go together. I'm thinking since I've got this thing all apart and I can pull off the bottom half of the case as I have done and raise this up, what I can do now is take the cylinder head and put it like this upside down and one at a time I can load my piston 
with the rings easily into the cylinder like so and then I've got full access to the crankshaft and everything I just go like this let the chain drop in there's another advantage that the chain is just falling down by gravity I can slide this on and then just insert the rod up onto the crankshaft um, once it's up far enough put the end cap on and there it is and uh, this is heavy anyway that's the plan let's get started on that the first thing we need to do is uh, get the bottom of this cylinder head all cleaned up and get all the old gasket material off get it completely prepped and ready for assembly and uh, the cylinders should be honed and I don't think that's actually been done yet so I gotta look into that this is a three stone cylinder hone what it does is it's spring loaded you can adjust the spring tension right here and you put it inside the cylinder and it rotates around and what it's going to do is hone the cylinder it's going to clean it up and it's also going to put some microscopic grooves in it that will help the uh, piston rings to seat into place let me explain a little further about how that works inside this cylinder right here you can see there are some grooves in there it looks like it's been honed once already but it's not really enough to my liking I can still see a little bit of uh, scoring in there there's a little bit of uh, this is where the piston ring comes up and stops on the top of the top dead center stroke and there's always a little bit of uh, leftover discoloration there that should be gone um, it should be honed just a little bit more and the angle of these crossing each other is a little bit shallow so let me explain a little more about that now okay so honing a cylinder this is what we're after inside the cylinder something about 35 to 45 degrees um, let's just do this and you get an idea what I'm talking about that's what the uh, hone mark should look like now as the hone moves around in a circle and you move it in and out like this you'll end up with marks like that the reason you do that is that what you'll do is you create these minute scratches in the cylinder wall which is okay because what they're going to do is help the piston ring seat into the cylinder if we were to look at one of those scratches on edge uh, on the cylinder wall you'd see something like that it'd be like maybe a little V you know just a small scratch in it well that creates an edge right there that edge can actually do machine work for us now let's just get it down to one groove let's just say we have this one groove right here the piston ring would be this the pencil moving up and down in the cylinder okay well look at the relationship between that groove and the piston ring as I move up the groove is actually moving across the piston ring this does a sort of cutting effect on the ring and it helps it to seed in to the shape of the cylinder okay so that's what honing the cylinder is all about it cleans it up it uh, gets it round again essentially and it also takes away a little bit of the score marks the flat stone type I prefer because well they're flat so if you have a little bit of a worn cylinder that might have a little waviness to it this will help take that out and you'll be able to see it as you hone the cylinder you'll see those marks show up but you'll see places maybe where they're not showing up so you hone it a little bit more until they go away there's another type of hone that looks like a bottle brush with balls on the end of it that's called a ball hone I'm not a big fan of those because they tend to follow you know the uh, unevenness of a cylinder that's bad and worn in a strange way and all you do is you hone it but you're not really cleaning it up and getting it back to a nice round cylinder again now we'll get this thing in there and I'll show you the technique I use to hone cylinders I've got this chucked up in a cordless drill it's just gonna spin like that so what we'll do is push it into the cylinder and you see the stones just flatten out to the to the cylinder and now we're gonna get some oil in there I have to use a little bit of 10 weight oil I've got some marble mystery oil put in this this little uh, squirt bottle you get a pretty fair amount in there give it a little spin when I get them really well lubed up you're probably gonna have some oil getting around all over the place but whatever you need a pretty fair amount in there so get some oil in there 
and then just kind of watch it and you'll see as it spins just your eyeball and your persistence of vision will show you that you're at about a 45 degree angle. Be careful not to come too far out or go too far through because the stones will pop out like that. You don't want that to happen. Nice persistent speed. You get in a rhythm after a while with it. We'll just stop, pull them out, and let's take a look at what we've got here. Clean it off with a rag and just take a look at the angles and look for any telltale leftover witness mark up here at the top like I pointed out before that little bit of dark area should be gone you shouldn't see any big scoring left any low spots and uh, this looks pretty good I think that's about all it's gonna take these won't need too much honing I'll just do that to all the cylinders then we'll be ready to put the pistons in and we'll rinse all that stuff out with some parts cleaner to get all that crap out of there. You don't want any abrasive left in there at all. These look good. Let's take another look. You notice that dark line is gone now on all of them. We've got a nice nice texture going on there. Just a nice bit of honing to help those piston rings seat in. Very important step. Okay, we have clean cylinders. Now we've got to prep the pistons. Uh, there's a lot of carbon on top. This one's been cleaned a little bit. And then you need to watch for carbon buildup in the ring grooves. Those are also called the ring lands, L-A-N-D-S. That's where the ring lands on. And there's a way that you can clean those out with a special tool that goes in that groove and takes all that carbon and crud out of there. Another way is to just take a broken piece of piston ring and you can just drag it through there like this with your hand. Just go real carefully. You don't want to scratch away any metal. All you want to do is take off the carbon buildup. And you can see the little bits of it that are coming off there on the piece. So we'll just do that first. Get all the ring grooves cleaned up. Very important to do that. If you don't get all of that carbon out of the base of there, the uh, piston ring won't squeeze tight enough and you can actually cause too much friction on the cylinder wall and overheat everything and that's not good. So make sure you get the grooves really clean of all of the carbon buildup. Now as far as the stuff on the outside and the top of the piston, you can just use a, a wire brush. Just a, I've got a stainless steel one here, a small one. And if you just work at it, a little at a time you can get that edge pretty cleaned up and get most of that carbon off from there and then you could follow it up with some 800 grit or greater as in a thousand or twelve hundred whatever some crocus cloth and just give it a little bit of a polish don't sand too much you don't want to take any diameter off the piston you just want to clean it up The top of the piston, uh, same thing, get after it with a wire brush, maybe a little bit of parts cleaner on there along with the wire brush. It'll help dissolve that carbon and just take your time. Try not to scrape it with anything that might really gouge the surface. You don't want to do that. Be nice to your pistons. Here we go, one cleaned up piston. And make sure that the holes right here for the oil are free of any debris. Just look through them, make sure that there's uh, nothing there. If there is some stuff in there, you can take a little piece of wire and clean it out. You can also squirt a little bit of parts cleaner through there. So we're ready to put the uh, piston rings on this one now. Here's our set of uh, piston rings for one piston marked right here with STD. That means standard size. Let's go ahead and open this up. And we'll be careful with these. They are very fragile, as I demonstrated in an earlier video. So what you've got here is a total of five rings. 
this one, well, these three, I should say, this is the oil ring. And it's this piece that's the spacer. And then there's another thin one and another thin one. And those sandwich together like that. That's the way those will go together. The other ones, there should be, uh, let's see, let's take a look if they have a, no, some have a groove and some don't. Uh, I noticed there are two different looking ones here. One of them has a lighter color to it, the other one has a darker color. And I don't have any, uh, any paperwork in here as to which piston ring is which. So I'm going to do a little looking on here for any stampings that might be in here and that'll tell me which one is uh, the top ring and which one is the second. Does that mark even show up there? Well, anyway, there's a mark on top. Tiny little manufacturer mark. On this one, it's a R. That goes up toward the top of the piston. There's also two different types of rings here, and I've illustrated them here on the paper for you. This one is the top ring. It has a bevel on the outer edge, right there and right there. You can see that in that drawing and then the second ring is a tapered ring and what that does is it makes contact with the uh, piston cylinder wall at this lower edge that helps a little bit with initial break in and also helps control oil it acts like a scraper for oil down here is the oil control ring and that's made up of that spacer and then two smaller rings but this top ring has definitely got two bevels on it so if we look at our rings here, the top ring does have a different color to it on the edge. It's the more silver one. If you look at the profiles under a magnifying glass, you'll be able to tell which is which. Just remember the beveled one goes on the top and the tapered one is the second ring. Now when you put these on the piston, you want to space the gaps on the rings uh, about 120 degrees apart. So there'd be like one there, one there, one here, roughly. And the oil control ring is a bit unique because what you'll do with that is you'll have the bottom ring first and the gap will be like right there. And then the spacer ring, you'll want to put that gap right about there, about maybe two millimeter or two centimeters away from that gap. And then this upper one, we put the gap back over here again. So basically what you're doing is just make sure that the gaps of all of these three rings are staggered apart by about two centimeters. Okay, I'm gonna do the oil control ring first. And I can just do that with my hands. I'll just go ahead and start one side of it. Take it all the way around. And then I'll take the next one and I find my gap. My gap is right there. I'm going to line that up with the wrist pin hole just so I know where it's at. And I can take the next one, stagger it over about two centimeters away, and then just work it around like this. And you can kind of just thread it on in there by hand be real careful with it. Okay, that one is on. Now I'll get the next one on and I'll start that one staggered over this way toward this side. And then run that around. There we go. Now what I've got here, if you can see it, the, uh, the spacer has its gap right about there. The bottom ring has a gap right about here. The top ring has a gap right about here. So now we could just say that all of these, their center is right here on the piston. So that means that the next two rings, we want to put one gap right about there and the other gap right about there, something like that, about 120 degrees apart. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it as close as you can. 
Now for the next two rings, you definitely don't want to try to do it by hand. Too easy to break it. What you need is one of these guys. This is a ring spreader. I'll grab one of the old rings here and show you. You just basically get it set right in there like that and then you can spread it apart and you can put it right down over the top of the piston and it won't have such a tendency to break the piston ring. Now of course if you really crank on it you probably could break it but point being you really should use this tool to put the rings on. So let's identify the second ring that's this one right here. Let's look for the mark. There's the mark. It points up. So we'll get it right here and just gently spread it apart. And then we'll get it down into the second groove and let it go. And there it is, lined up. And now we'll take the top one. My mark is pointing up. Put it in the tool, spread it apart, and drop it into place. There we go. That's it. And we just need to do that to all the pistons and we'll be all set. I want to show you a pretty simple method to check the diameter and the wear of your cylinder. Take one of your piston rings, one of the compression rings, and slide it in there. Take a piston push it down just to about the level where you're at the uh, the wrist pin hole is flush with the deck of the head so that's probably down in there oh I would say that's probably about 15 or 18 millimeters now there's a gap right there I'm going to zoom down in to that gap you can see what I'm talking about take a feeler gauge and measure that gap and that will tell you how worn out the uh, cylinder is. There is a specification in the book for how big that gap can be before you need to go oversize on the piston. On this ring I can just barely fit a 12 thousandths feeler gauge in there. The limit for the ring, actually the ring wear, is about 27 thousandths. So these cylinders are in good shape. Now that we have the rings installed, it's time to put the piston onto the connecting rod. So what I'm going to do now is put a tiny bit of assembly lube. I'm going to use a brush here to get some in there. A little bit of assembly lube inside the uh, connecting rod wrist pin hole. Some stringy stuff. And I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube in the wrist pin hole on the piston. Now one side of my piston here has the tiny little ring in it. It's right there. That's the ring that holds the wrist pin in place. So I'll go ahead and start it from this side over here. We'll get the wrist pin down there, or the connecting rod down there by the wrist pin. And we'll push that in. Now I can put this little retaining ring in here. You just get it started in a groove and take a small screwdriver or an awl and just start working it down in there. can be a little tricky. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that gap in that ring around a bit. Make sure it's actually in the groove all the way around. There we go. That's it. This is just about ready to insert into the cylinder now. Okay, let's double check where the ring gaps are at. Make sure they're in the right spot. We have one there. We've got another one lined up right there and the third one lined up right there. Okay, that's all good. Now, what I like to do, this is a technique of my own, put a little bit of that uh, Marvel Mystery Oil right on the piston rings, right on the groove. Just get a little bit in there all the way around. 
put it right there where the gap in the ring is and just let it run all the way around. This way you've got a good initial amount of oil in there when the time comes to fire up the engine and uh, this will also help with piston ring break-in. What's happening when we first do that is it's, it's essentially a machining process. Those grooves that we put in the cylinder earlier are acting as a machine tool essentially to help these rings seat in. Let me introduce you to a piston ring compression tool. This is one right here and this type uses a little quarter inch drive and it just tightens up like this. To release it you squeeze that handle inwards and then just rotate it back. So what we can do is just place this right over the piston rings but we need to loosen it a little more first. We're going to slide that right over the rings and we're going to let just a little bit of the uh, piston poke out the top but for right now we're just going to tighten this down boy it's hard to turn it's a brand new one there we go this is going to compress those piston rings into the piston like so and so now what we'll do is we're going to just tap this gently on the bench until we have just a little bit of the piston protruding from the compression tool. So you can see it's just got a little bit poking out. The reason we do that is so that we can get this started into the cylinder. Arrow pointing towards the exhaust side. We're going to put that right there. And I think we've got our gaps set up so they're away from this little slot here. Just going to push that down in there as much as we can and hold it good and steady. I'm going to take a dead blow hammer now and just start gently tapping downward. And if we get it right, it should just slide right into the cylinder without any of the rings catching on anything. Having a little bit of trouble there with that last oil scraper ring. Yeah, it's hanging up on me just a little bit. Go ahead and release the tension on this and get it out of my way. I actually should have had that pointing the other direction. Yeah, I can see right here I've got uh, one of the oil scraper rings is hold, holding up just a little. But I might be able to cheat that a little just by giving it a little push. Yep, there we go. And that's in there. And that's it. That's essentially how that works. Now an alternate method if you don't have one of these, you can actually get away with doing it with a hose clamp if it's wide enough. It's a little trickier because you've got this part here that's not a completely flat smooth surface to work with but it will work in a pinch if you don't have a piston ring compressor tool. Play around with one of these. You can practice even with your old piston rings first to see if you can uh, actually make it work but that is a possible alternative. Well that's about a wrap for this week. Throughout the week I'll be putting the piston rings on the pistons and connecting them up to the connecting rods, load everything into all these cylinders, make sure everything's good and clean, and in the next video we'll put the gaskets on everything, load it all up in here with the head in place, torque the head to this side of the crank case. We will be connecting the connecting rods and torquing them onto the crankshaft. And that'll be about it for the top end for now. It'll be about 95% complete. All we'll have to do is put the camshaft in later and do the timing on that. That'll happen uh, in a few more videos because once we get all that done, we have to put the bottom half of the crankcase on. That's going to be a video all by itself. 
So thanks for watching. Good to be back at the workbench again. I'm really loving the new workbench. It's so much easier to work with than what I had before, which was makeshift tables here and there. So nice to have an organized garage again. And the heat in here is kind of nice too. Last winter, I froze my arse off working on the uh, Sabre. So thanks for watching. Thanks for the donations. Until next time. This is a 28,000 BTBCP. BC, <laughs>